Hello, this is Sandy, and I'm back at my Solaris by Baby Lock working on some machine embroidery. This time it's going to be edge to edge machine quilting using the guided process. And so I thought that I would make a series of videos about how I do that. This first one's going to be about the setup part what you have to do before you actually come to the machine and set things up and get going with the actual quilting. So of course you would create your quilt. Uh, you have to piece the front of the quilt uh, using whatever pattern you desire and then cut the batting and the backing for the middle and the back of the quilt larger than the front. And so I've already done that and I have adhered those three layers together by using safety pins. Last time I did a quilt, and these videos are out here on YouTube, I used um, spray, glue spray, to keep the front layer to the stabilizer in the middle of the batting, and then flipped it over and did spray glue to do the back to the batting. And it was okay. Um, I know that I've read and most of my research has showed that people can use safety pins or some people have used glue spray. Some people claim that the glue spray will help the fabric uh, prevent it from shifting. And so I'm not too sure about that because I haven't made enough quilts. But I do know that we have these safety pins that are kind of bent so that you can really angle them into the fabric and actually have them come up to the top you know like it the the way that the i should have had one out the way that they're shaped it makes it really easy to clip uh, the safety pin to the fabric easily go through the bottom come up through the top and fasten it and that's what i decided to do i didn't do the spray glue this time so we'll see how that goes um so i've done that part i've actually hooped it already and um, I'm using a large dime man magnetic hoop, and I'm trying to remember what the size is. I think it's 16. Let me just look. The magnetic hoop is 10 and a half by 16. And so that's what I use on my last big edge to edge quilting projects it's the same thing and um i've already got it hooped and ready to go i picked out an embroidery a quilting thread and i'm using wonderfield deco bob um and it's kind of a really beautiful golden golden orange color and the reason i like this is because it's 80 weight and it's strong thread and when i used it the last time um, it, it just is so, it's light enough and strong enough that when you use it for quilting, it sinks into the fabric and you can't really tell the color. So if it's not a perfect color match, then I'm okay. And so that's what I'm going to try and use again this time. Um, so I picked that out and then I wound up like, I don't know, eight bobbins. I'm sure I'm going to need more than that because I know I went through a lot this, that first time. I did the edge to edge quilting videos and uh, this is a li little bit larger so I am I have my bobbins all ready to go I'm using a 75 11 needle and I think everything else is ready to go oh, I measured across the um, quilt from width wise in three sections lengthwise in three sections to make sure I got the same measurement and so I'm ready to plug those in. So I've got the machine on and I'm going to just show you how I get into the edge to edge screen. So you press embroidery and then down here there's a Q with the little square and squigglies. Press that and then this number four is where the edge to edge guided process is. There's 10 um, edge to edge patterns. I hope that they come out with more. Uh, but I don't know because I don't know that they're going to upgrade this machine. I have not heard. And it sounds like they're coming out with a new one. 
that's even more advanced than the Solaris Vision. So I thought, okay, I'll take the 10 and then you can always buy um, edge to edge quilting at any major um, company that does the digitizing patterns, designs, and you can do it yourself manually. A lot of people are, do that right now. I've done it once before. I haven't, I should do that and practice that part too, because I'm limited to these 10 patterns and they're beautiful, but, uh, you know, sometimes you want something different. So, so that's what this looks like. And you pick the pattern. And I thought, mine is kind of florally. This would be kind of fun to do, this flower one. And so I picked that one, and I'm going to press set. Now, this is the screen where I'm going to plug in my measurements. So width-wise, I have to plug in the number up here, but I plug it in down here. So I type in 55, set, and it pushes the number up there. As you can see, it popped over to here. So this is the length and it's 69. So I'm going to press 69 here and press set. It's already set to the hoop that I'm using 10 and 5 eighths by 16. So that's all I need to do. So now if I wanted to select and go back, I could use that button there, but I don't have any more to do on this page. So I press next. Now it's telling me that I have to hoop this 30 times. Um, so this is a much larger quilt than I did the last time. And so definitely I'm going to need that trick that I found for, you know, if you get, say you only want to do one row of hoopings and then shut off your machine, go to bed or whatever, go to the store. Um, you can do that and you can go back and find where you left off and continue on with the machine guided process. So I thought that was a really big find. Uh, and it's in the book, but it's kind of in small print. And so I really like to share that with people. I might even do a separate video on that just so it's easy to go to, even for myself, if I don't do this that often. So now I'm going to press memory because that way I'll save 69 by 55 in the memory and it's 30 hoopings. I'm going to press memory. If I wanted to, I could change the color, but I don't really want to do that. Now it says the data was saved in the machine's memory. Embroider the data and I say, okay. So it's right here. These are the other designs I was working on earlier in the week. This shows that I have in the first compartment here, my edge to edge quilting. And when I pull that up in the very far left hand corner are all 30 steps of the machine guided process. I think these other steps on the right are for if you wanted to um, do the process but not have all the machine messages to guide you. So, but I am going to definitely use the machine guided process. So I'm going to press this 30 here and you can see the first one comes up in the screen up here and I'll press set. And from this point on, it just starts telling you how to hoop your fabric. So that's all there is to set up. So I would right now, if I were going to continue this video, I would start to hoop the fabric starting on the very far left hand side of the quilt. I would make sure that the hoop is up. I don't know. It's about that far. Usually you're pretty safe if you're hooping that far above the, it's like an inch. Or an inch and a half above the corner, the top part of the the um the quilt, and the same amount out to the left side, because you want to make sure you get into the frame of your hoop, and that way it will be able to quilt all of the um, stitches that it needs to quilt for hoop number one. So after you do that, it tells you to begin sewing from the upper left corner of the fabric attach the embroidery frame in the initial sewing position. So I think this is where I'm going to leave it off here because the next time I come back, I will have it already hooped and um, I will just go through how I actually get it aligned in that corner. And we'll go over that again. Okay. I hope that you enjoy the videos that I've been doing. I just do it for myself. 
um, to keep pushing myself to learn about the machine. I'm hoping that I help someone out there with their journey and we can always exchange ideas. Um, I, I'm not ready to do lives yet because I only record using my phone, but at some point it would be fun to do that once in a while. So if you like what I'm doing, give the video a like, subscribe, and write a comment. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.